welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host. My guest this evening is local radio personality and all-around great guy, Ray Andrewson from AM 1220 WQUN. Ray. Hello, Peter. Welcome, my friend. How good. are you? Pete's good to be here once again. It is good to be here once again. I believe last time we were together, we had our winter retire on. That's right. Well, I've decided since I was coming down by the shoreline that I would at least wear half um, uh, instead of over the calf socks, <laughs> I would wear regular socks. There you go. Uh, of a lighter variety, lightweight <laughs> summer khakis, and I would take off a tie. Exactly. So I'm dressed down for the night. Exactly. Yeah, me too. It's good to, good to see you again. Same here. So what's, what's new? What's new since last time that you and I sat down together? Well, the radio station continues to do well. Um, we are um, a very well regarded community station mm -hmm. uh, serving uh, Connecticut. You can stream us on TuneIn app, you can yeah. get online, uh, wqn.com. Mm -hmm. And I've been hosting the morning show now 18 and a half years. Uh, Greg Little is still the news director, has been now. We've been together in the mornings uh, as a team for 17 years. I look really hard for a news director uh, whose first name was Bob, but we didn't want to do a morning show that was Ray and Bob yeah. because <laughs> there was already Bob and Ray. So uh, exactly. we wound up with Ray and Greg, and it's been a team that's worked. <laughs> so we, we continue to cover the community, a lot of community interviews, just like what you do. I was going to say, and I believe a little birdie told me, just like I do. I was in your studios not long ago. Yes, that's right. We were there just a few, in fact, uh, to introduce this program, and I think right. it's great. You know, we've got it uh, running now along the shoreline, other cable systems mm -hmm. on your YouTube uh, channel. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm having a lavalier moment, excuse that's me. That's okay, go ahead. Uh, we, all have, we all have our lavalier moments. Exactly, but, I'll keep talking. Uh, that's right, but I, no, I'm well adjusted. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're good. But it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be doing this type of community television as well. Right. Because I appreciate what you do over the years. Well, and I've you. been doing this for 18 years. How long have you been doing this? Well, I was, I've, I've been with Valley Shore about a year and a half. It'll be two very soon. And for that, but before that, I was, com I was with Comcast, the Comcast franchise in Clinton for about 15 to 16 years. Yeah, so about the same time. Right, exactly. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a good tenure. It is. Well, you wanted to ask me all these things about radio and the career you know, that I've pursued over the years and right. how our radio station functions as Main Street. Please. But this being summertime, yeah, sir. I just thought I'd say that um, I still remember my mm. time here along the shoreline at Hammond Asset, um, at Rocky Neck, yep. all the wonderful beaches we had. Oh yeah, totally. Being, being invited by friends and family to town beaches mm. and bringing on, along my little transistor radio uh -oh. so that I could not be without all my favorite radio stations back in the day <laughs> okay. uh, that, as you can imagine, my father didn't like uh -oh. uh, because the music was different from his taste <laughs> and bringing that out to my with my beach towel, beach umbrella and planting it there. And that was part of summer life and on the go shore. And the beach. Yeah, it was radio and it still follows us today and it does. Uh, for music and our habits have changed a little bit, but Definitely. I'm sure there's a transistor radio or somebody bringing a radio or uh, some other implement to the beach. Exactly, I, I, I would hope so. Now tell us a little bit about AM 1220 WQUN and your news department and programming and all that other fun stuff. Sure. Well, we're owned by Quinnipiac University. We're a commercially uh, licensed radio station. Okay. Uh, we are not the student radio station, so we're staffed by professionals. Uh, they work um, covering news. Yep. Uh, they, we do interviews. We have um, my morning show, which is from uh, 6 to 10, the WQ and morning show, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Greg Little is on with me as the news director. We have full news, 10 minutes of local news, top, bottom of the hour. Plus, we're a CBS affiliate. So every right. hour on the hour, throughout the day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have CBS News uh, Radio, which includes Charles Oz, Goodness yep. Commentary, uh, Dave Ross. Uh, all the other features that come with CBS. We also have full weather during the day. We have meteorologist Gary Lessor, who's been with us. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Dr. Mel was our longtime, uh, right. longtime meteorologist for many, many years. Uh, and, and Dr. Mel is a dear friend, as you know, yes. oh, yeah. uh, for many years too with us. We also have a news partnership now with Channel 3, WFSB TV. Mm -hmm. So we cover local news with them. We uh, also have uh, uh, their weather uh, team, uh, Bruce yeah. DePriest. Um, we have uh, Mark Dixon, yep. uh, you know Scott Haney, the whole crew. Um, uh, they are all part of our uh, weather coverage Very as well. Nice. So that's important. We cover the beat too with a lot of local interviews in the mornings and afternoons mm -hmm. from our area. Our signal, our studios are in Whitney Avenue in Hamden. Yeah. But we are also representing the entire Southern Connecticut area 
uh, and the shoreline uh, as part of our coverage. So this being summer, we expand our coverage even deeper in, uh, exactly. into, the, into the community, for example. Um, as we know, Ham and Acid and Meg's Point, the Nature Center is very sure. busy it with is. activities. Guilford, we have the Guilford Arts Center that has their wonderful craft fair that always mm -hmm. happens in mid-July. Uh, right. um, the you know, they had a wonderful uh, Rotary Lobster Fest last that, month. Yeah, that was always oh, big news. So we, we cover the shore as well, and uh, I think that's part of summer. You know, when you come out in this area, this is Connecticut summer. Speaking of summers and local coverage and serving the community, one person we need to talk, you and I need to talk about, is our dear friend Jim Lamb from Sarah. Yes. Well. Good guy, and, and Jim is also um, a very dedicated, uh, uh, forceful advocate and executive director, Pat Bourne, yep. on behalf of Sarah, sure. which has done a wonderful job since 1957 mm -hmm. uh, serving the shoreline uh, for people with intellectual disabilities to find gainful employment. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a great organization, it, it really is. And I know Jim has been a guest, and so has Pat. They uh, were on program. the program ago. Yeah, a few days ago. and. Uh, he's, he's a great guy, very uh, public-spirited uh, person, but that's, that's the org type of organization that we bring on to WQN, to, as you right. do with your program, to talk about the uh, needs of Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, events they have coming up. I think they have their golf tournament yep. uh, in yep. August, yep. which they got their golf comes up. Coming up not, the, not on yeah, there was a wonderful gala around Kentucky Derby time in mm -hmm. early May. Yep. Uh, so we highlight events um, for that, also the history of this area. So we will uh, highlight the historic houses, the Henry Woodfield State Museum in Guilford. Uh, we know that uh, if you go right down into the center of Madison, you have uh, history everywhere, Clinton, Westbrook, Old Saybrook, uh, even if you go inland. Uh, so we tell people about the events uh, going on around here. I should mention, I yes. can't forget our uh, afternoon host, uh, Assistant General Manager Steve Savino. Uh. Steve is, uh, you, you know Steve very well. He's oh, yeah. a spirited person, um, very uh, plugged into state broadcasting. He's uh, worked at various places like WTIC, right. uh, AM in Hartford for many years. Uh, Steve has now been with us uh, for about 12 years, wow. uh, almost 12 years. And Laura Cannon, who's also mm -hmm. been our, one of our news anchors, Bob Hancock, uh, Bob Mortali, who's mm -hmm. also done sports and play-by-play for us for Bobcats uh, basketball, yep. Paul Baselli, uh, Jackie Lopper, uh, John DeAndrew who hosts a reporter at large program. Mm -hmm. We have an Irish show on uh, Sunday mornings for two hours with Sean Canning, the oldest continuously operating Irish uh, show uh, in the state, really? I understand, at this point. All yeah, right. that's true, so nice. uh, fun fact. And also Dick Robinson, American Standards by the Sea. Right. Dick, of course, being a Connecticut broadcasting icon, that's mm -hmm. on Saturday mornings. And then we have uh, John Pizzarelli and Jesse Molaski, who is a, a native of Connecticut, mm -hmm. John's sure. wife, and yeah. uh, they have a show right afterwards. So that oldies, we're an oldies, a standard station. You hear Michael, Michael Bublé and Frank Sinatra, but you also hear The Fifth Dimension. You hear The Beatles, you hear right. Neil Diamond, The Carpenters, Phil Collins, Whitney Houston. It's a great variety of music as it well. It is, it definitely is. And from what I understand, back when you first started, that the station didn't have a news director. You guys just had people who delivered the news? Yes, it was actually, um, back in those days, it was primitive. We had to uh, keep the transmitter going by bringing in the wood and <laughs> chopping it. And uh, you're not buying that. Uh, we started yeah. small, and we've grown. Uh, uh -huh. I'm very blessed with what uh, Quinnipiac has done as a service. Uh, to the community with the radio station. Right. Uh, they really have. And we did not have a news director. We had news anchors in the morning and afternoon. Okay. And only a live morning show. We did not have a live afternoon show at that time. So it's, it's grown tremendously. Uh, small, dedicated professional staff. Um, it's very focused on um, uh, creating a, a great product for people. All right, I'm going to see if you remember. Back in, back in the day, before Greg Little came around, yes, who was your news person uh, for well, the morning show? The morning show, we had John DeAndre, who now hosts the right. uh, Reporter, Reporter at Large, at large segment. on Saturday on mornings. Side. And he went to work for the mayor's office in Hamden back in 1998 for former Mayor Barbara Di Nicola. Really? So he was only with us for uh, a year, and I guess he liked it enough to come back and uh, do a public affairs program with us. Um, Very nice. So we have all, it's all hands on deck. It is. Uh, it Spe really is. Speaking speaking of the town of Hamden, you guys have a new you guys have a new mayor because former mayor Scott Jackson moved on to we want, we want to say bigger and better or well he I moved mean, on. He moved on. He's now up in Hartford. Uh, yep. He's uh, I believe I forget his long title, but 
Um, it, it, all I know is it's uh, basically you can condense this title by saying policy, budget, stuff. But I don't think that fits really nicely no, into a state title, but that's what the former mayor is doing. <laughs> uh, he studies polyanalysis, right. and he's, he's um, working under the Malloy administration at this point. He had served five and a half years nice. as a Hamden native. And right. yep. another Hamden native, Kurt Lang, is now our mayor. So okay. we, um, we bring in the mayors, the officials, the Hamden Chamber of Commerce. I uh, was going to say, we'll talk about that too, but what before as we show. move on to the Chamber of Commerce, yeah. what is the new mayor like? Oh, good guy. Is he's he? uh, been there now in office. It was a special election mm -hmm. May 28th, which he That's won. That's right. So Kurt Lang was the administrative assistant for uh, Mayor Scott Jackson. Mayor Scott Jackson was the administrative assistant uh, formerly uh, as well in town to the mayor. So uh, right. it seems to be a nice plan of continuity mm -hmm. in Hamden. Uh, but we also interview Mayor Harp in New Haven, comes to our station. Yeah. Um, Mike Frieda, the first selectman in uh, North Haven, and other officials in the area. So we, we don't just serve Hamden, we serve the you, entire you, you service community. The entire, you service the entire community. Yeah. Before we go to the break, let's talk about the Hamden Chamber of Commerce. Sure. And your role that you play with them. The, I'm serving on the board for the Hamden Regional Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Our uh, president is Nancy Dudchick. Nancy has also served in a statewide uh, leadership capacity with the chamber. She's mm -hmm. very experienced. Um, it's a Main Street chamber. It's Hamden, North Haven, um, New Haven, Wallingford, businesses that are local, okay. um, other area communities that, that participate. I enjoy that. I mean, we, we're yeah. obviously having a tough time right now with business. Uh, it's not the, the easiest economy in Connecticut. It's important to get out there and come up with fundraisers, creative ideas. Uh, chambers are great resources right. for small businesses, uh, for very little overhead and cost, for connections, for networking, um, and also uh, to devise business plans. I would encourage anybody to, to uh, be on a chamber or get involved with the mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce if they're starting a business or even an existing business uh, that's been around. You can be a big business. Quinnipiac University has been around since 1929. Our right. football team's still undefeated. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have one. Exactly. Uh, but, but we've been around. We're, we're a member as well. So big or small chambers work. Really? And you guys have, you guys, from what I understand by doing my research, you guys at the station do a chamber, every chamber? Every Friday morning at 830. Mm. The Hamner Regional Chamber of Commerce comes in. It's Friday morning marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, President Dudchick with us, and then yeah. we talk about chamber events, but we also bring in businesses. Ooh. And I just, I'm sure like you, you've interviewed a lot of people. I oh, just yeah. find it fascinating what people do. Exactly. Small businesses. I'm, I'm fascinated by how they do it, what their market is, mm -hmm. what incur why they do what they exactly. do, where the inspiration uh, came from. So I enjoy the interviews a lot. Exactly. Well, you know what, Ray? We're about to go into the break really quick, and we'll be right back after a short segment. Sounds good. We'll be good. right back after a break. Thank you. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance. So we're going to put some hands in their pants. Aww, they walk like a monkey. <laughs> Time. Jimmy can't sing and Tommy can't dance. So we're gonna put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host sitting here with local radio personality Ray Andrewson from AM 1220 WQN. Ray, welcome back. Well, it's good to be here. It's nice to have you here. So what were we talking about during the first segment? Or did we want to maybe flip the script for a few minutes? Flip the script. Wow. Yeah, we, well, that sounds interesting. Let's flip the script. All right. Well, so do I get to interview you? You get, you, get to, you get to interview me. Oh, well, we have to change the graphics, though, I think. I know. We, I, need, uh, we need the AM 1220 logo behind do us. Do I get my personal sailboat in a sloop? You do. I do? You do. All right. Then we'll, we'll switch off here. All right. I was coming out here tonight thinking about you 
and your uh, work over the years. You mentioned 15 years mm -hmm. um, with with the, with the Clinton facility here in his beautiful facility in Westbrook. Mm -hmm. uh, you've right. done this for two years, so that's a long period of time. It is. Why did you start doing this? What was your inspiration? <laughs> Honestly, it's actually a very funny story as far as how I got involved. Back in the back in the back in the day, I was going to the I was going to Comcast to in Clinton to drop something off, and I went in, dropped off what I had to drop off. The local public access coordinator at the time says to me, in all honesty, he was like, "Do you realize that every town on the shoreline does a local community affairs show, but the town of Clinton?" I'm like. No, I didn't know that. I'm like, that's something to think about. So I left. I went to my meeting. I met with the local, the, for, the current and local first selectman for the town of Clinton, said something to him. He walks around his desk, puts his arm on my shoulder, and says, congratulations, you're the new host of the program. <laughs> and it's all, up, it's all up to you now. That was many years ago. That is a long time ago. And it is. Kind of so it what, is. what have been some of the memorable interviews for you? I mean, there must be something that sticks out in your mind. I would, honestly, I would say my, one of my favorite interviews was Dr. Henry Lee. I had, I had, I had Dr. Lee on when we, ta when we taped in Clinton, and after the show was over, there was a little coffee shop right, right around the corner of where the post office is, and the, the owner is a friend of mine. And so I called her, I'm like, I've got Dr. Lee coming on. Can we do something at the, sh can we do something at your coffee shop after the taping? So she put on a, pot, a couple pots of coffee, made some cookies, and him and I walked in, we addressed the media. We, they, most of them after the press briefing left, he continued to stay for the next hour and a half, drink coffee, eat cookies, and tell stories. Talk about an impressive interview. And, he's, and believe it or not, you're probably thinking, Henry Lee, what, what, what type of guy is he? He's very down to earth, very normal. He's a very interesting guy to sit and have a conversation with. Oh, that's great. So I guess broadcasting has always been in your DNA. Oh, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Not. So uh, you've got Henry Lee and mm -hmm. what others? There must be some more. Let's see, we've got Henry Lee. I would have to say Scott Jackson. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed the former mayor of the city of Hamden when he was on the Sandy Hook Advisory Committee. Basically, all, basically I've interviewed Joe Lieberman. We've interviewed Joe Courtney, who is the congressman for the, congressman for the local area. We've interviewed Kevin Lembo, who is the state treasurer for the state of Connecticut. I would say th those are probably most, the most memorable because like you and I have something in common and that is we both serve the community. Yes, we've in yes, we interview state and local officials, but we also interview members of the local community who have events coming up in the area. Well, it's interesting. I know that we hmm. met uh, before with the Clinton Bluefish Festival yes. many years ago. And right. You're very involved with that. Um, and I still think they're, they're scaling and boning fish somewhere here in Connecticut on the shoreline. Uh, well, that's bluefish. <laughs> I mean, I like bluefish. I've gone I out did, to I Race did. Rock and I've, I've caught blues. That's my favorite kind of fishing, I saltwater did. fishing. Yeah, you know, it's, and, and it's, it's that kind of event that brings um, focus to a community right. uh, as the arts do in New Haven. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at um, even how the arts, you know, even an old Lyme, the Florence Griswold House, you know, museum. Yep. That's an art, arts community as well. Um, but there's also seafaring communities. There's the Keeping Society in Guilford that preserves history. Every town has a few of these organizations. Right. And you sometimes they get overlooked, I think. And right. they're more interesting in many ways than the higher profile interviews. Don't you agree? I totally agree. I totally agree, and like, like you just said, it's very important to reach out to your local community events and organiza organizations for people that don't know. Somebody might not know they exist, but might not know that they exist unless they read something in the paper, listen to me, listen to you, and say, oh, I heard, ab I heard about you on the Ray Andrewson show. I actually did an interview with the 
Executive Director for Literacy Volunteers, Valley Shore, not long ago. And he said to, he said to me off camera that one of their people who want to come in and take the tutor training classes, so he sends them the paperwork, he does the, prelim, he does the prelim interview, he says to the woman who he's interviewing, oh great, so how'd you hear about us? The woman looks at him, oh, I saw you on with Pete Mazzetti. And that was up in the, I believe she, she was from East Hampton. She was, she was a little bit farther up in the viewing area that, but, that I reach, but John, was, John Ferraris, who's the executive director for literacy volunteers, was like, we got this woman because she saw the interview that you and I did on your show. Mm. Oh, that's great. Well, how about the interns? Because the um, uh, cable systems always bring in students. They're learning about television. They work the cameras. They work in the control room tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you like working with them? You're sort of an educator. Oh, they're awesome. I, 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 I got to tell you that I have one of the best crews that anybody could, anybody could want. Yes, that's my, my floor director, my crew in the booth. My public access manager, Chris Morgan, is absolutely phenomenal to work with. He's very, he's very accommodating if I have a question or I, if I have to run in and pick something, up for, pick something up for a guest or come in and pick up DVDs. He's very accommodating. So every, everybody who is a volunteer, with, well, everybody who is working on my show from my floor director to my camera person out on the floor to my crew in the control room, Everybody thinks, you must love this because you must be getting paid. We don't get paid. Mm. We're all volunteers, including me. Well, well, that's, that's terrific that, it is. that you've got all these volunteers because I think a volunteer doesn't do it for the money, I don't think. They no. do it for the love of the community and the, <laughs> the love of their neighborhood as well. Exactly. But you're a local guy. This I am. Is, this is, tell, I think people forget that you are from here. This, these are your roots along the shoreline. I am. I, am. I was, I was at, believe, believe it or not, I live locally, but I was born in Fort Lauderdale. So I was actually, I'm like, I'm actually a Florida transplant yeah. who, came, who came up. My, my dad, we moved up here. I went through the whole school system. My dad came up and had a job, had a job lined up here. So we came up and here I am, went through the whole school system, and I'm very, very community-based, community-orientated. So now, um, yes. Clinton, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Clinton, Fort Lauderdale, ever dream about being a six-month broadcaster south, six months up here? Mm, I, actually, I actually have not, but that would be, some, that <laughs> that would be something very, very nice, especially during the winter. Mm. So yes. well, I've been doing this show for the last 17 years. What, what has surprised you? How, is the, how have the communities along the shoreline changed uh, from when you started? The communities that, uh, the community really ha has changed because there's a lot of new and upcoming nonprofits and new and local organizations that have popped up that weren't there in, that weren't there when the show first began, but are there now. I, I actually found, I, fo I found out the, I was, doing some local grocery shopping the other day and just standing in the supermarket. I was, I was with my mom and a woman comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder. Hi, can I help you? You're the local TV guy. I watch you every week. Keep up the good work. I really enjoy your show. Thank you. It's like very, very humbling. I've never Experience. Well, I've never, it's never been experienced. The magic of TV. Well, where we have a little <laughs> bit of a, a, a difference is you get to go into a place. Right. And because you're visible and right. they see you and there's Pete Mazzetti. Hmm. What's great about radio <laughs> is you can actually go to a nudist colony and nobody has to know until you open your mouth <laughs> what you do for a living. <laughs> I don't plan to go to a nudist colony this weekend, by the way. I was going to say, you're doing the morning show. Uh, that's right. Well, <laughs> you're, not, you're not seen. Unless they log on and they happen to see WQN.com and they see the, the website. It's true. Uh, exactly. In radio, you have a certain degree of privacy, anonymity, which television, if you're out and about, exactly. um, they know who you are. Exactly. They, 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 they do know who you are. And if, if people didn't know, the only people, way people would know who you are, the rest of the WQUN family, is if you go onto the website and take a look. 
pictures are up there of you guys, bios. That's right, yeah. And our Facebook page too. You yep. can friend us on Facebook because right. we're all on social media. And uh, we don't do talk radio. We don't do call-in radio. No. Um, we do other types of broadcasting mm -hmm. um, to serve the community and, and stay in touch with people. And I think that's really critical. I know that you know the, the, we're coming towards the end of your show. Mm -hmm. and I feel kind of awkward because I'm wrapping up your own interview. No, it's okay. But it's, but it's like that's the ultimate house guest. He actually lets you come in, cook dinner, and I will get up and do the dishes afterwards. Okay. All right. But, uh, you've been a gracious host here. Thank but, you. Um, where do you see this program going? Uh, you've done this now for 17 years. What's the future for Pete Mazzetti in this show? A tropical island somewhere. Doing the show from a, I think doing the show from a deserted island somewhere. Which has so you're going out to Plum Island? Is that where you're going to be? Yeah, Plum Island, Cedar Island. Okay. Uh, with the island in Branford, which is Thimble. There's many of them, <laughs> yes, that's right, little tiny ones. Thimble Islands. Yeah. No, I, on, honestly, Ray, I, I, see my, I see the show growing over the next couple of years, and it's going to be a fun ride, and I'm, I'm all for it. Great. Well, I don't have any more questions. You just have about a minute or two left, We've I guess. About a minute. Uh, all right. Well, then, before we say goodnight, I'm going to actually ask you that one more time if people want more information on the WQN Morning Show, where can yes. they go? Well, online, if you can't uh, get us through our terrestrial signal of AM 1220 WQUN, you can go to WQUN.com. Mm -hmm. You can find us on uh, TuneIn Radio, yep. uh, mobile phone apps. Uh, you can find us there. Um, and you could stream anywhere you go, all around the world. Even if you're out in Afghanistan, uh, Mongolia, Madagascar, there you pick go. us up. We don't have the weather forecast for you. No. Uh, I want to just be clear about that. I was going to say, Gary but Lessor doesn't reach out that, that far. Not at all. But uh, <laughs> we do uh, encourage you, if you like community programming with good music. In fact, our, our tagline is great music local news. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. We're another service at Quinnipiac University. We're on 24 hours, seven days a week. Yeah. And we intend to stay around just like you have exactly. for another 17, 18 more years plus. And exactly. And, and you guys also reach the base of the sleeping giant. That's where we're at. I Thank you. I say you guys are on the base of the sleeping giant. Hopefully the sleeping giant doesn't have shorts on. Well, maybe. Well, before we say goodnight, I just want to thank you for coming down. Hopefully we'll have you on again. Be great to be here. On behalf of Ray Andrews and I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night and we'll see you next week.